Broadcasting live from Studio X in the great country of Texas. Millionaires answer, what's your number one piece of personal finance advice to young people? Uh, just a warning, the show's going to be a disaster today. I forgot my stapler. But, uh, today will be the day I get organized, and you're going to hear a lot of paper shuffling. <laughs> Got a question like answered on the show, scott at scottallenturner.com. This was out of the Charlotte newspaper that I have up there. They did a survey of the millionaires living in Charlotte. Beautiful city. Beautiful city. A lot of my Charlotte listeners out there. That was my second choice to move to after graduating from college. I ended up in Atlanta. But Charlotte was just a short jaunt away. Been there many, many times. What do millionaires have to say? Some of these are stellar. A lot of these are fall into similar categories, and you get inspired by these. This is was geared towards young people, but this applies to people of any age, and it's information you can pass along as well. If you're one of my elder listeners, the first one. This is some, some of these are funny. Uh, buy a, a a ding dang house, we'll say. <laughs> Stop renting and thinking you're getting a deal because there's bad coffee in the lobby and some astroturf to call a dog park. <laughs> That was from someone who has a net worth of $1.9 million. All these people, I think they're all under $10 million Between Nope, that one's 15 right there. What do you have to say? Live well below your means. Avoid spend thrift friends. $15 million net worth. Yeah, renting. You can't. You can. You can build wealth renting, but you're always going to be paying someone else's mortgage. It's a challenge for me to discuss that topic because my parents never owned a home. They rented their entire life. And now mom is in, okay, I guess this really is a good example. Mine's, mom is in a small retirement village, has a $0 net worth, but she's super happy. Uh, so it can work depending on your outlook on life. Number two, from a person with $1.8 million in net worth. No more than $50 a year at Starbucks. What's that, like two trips? Okay. Uh, and then yeah. cook cook 350 dinners in your own kitchen year. Pay your savings account first. That was from a person with $1.8 million. You can see the different values going on here as well between different people. Different people achieve different levels of wealth in a multitude of ways. And certainly cooking 350 dinners at home a year. What's that, going out 15 times? Not my idea of a great life, but for some people, it certainly is. Third on the list, related to work. It's from a person with $2.4 million in net worth. Be willing to do anything when you get your first job. Becoming invaluable to an employer is key. Adding value to any job, that's first job or first team job. That's how I surround it, survived five rounds of layoffs in my second corporate job. I was valuable, didn't make a lot of waves at the job. The people who were the negative Nellies, they always got uh, booted first, no matter how smart or good they were at what they did. You know, people just didn't want to be around them, especially the bosses. That's why they, some of them got the boot. Add value, show up earlier than everyone else, stay later than anyone else. Now, there's a little secret here. It doesn't mean you got to be working during that time. It's just a perception. People say, uh, John, Mary, they're at the desk first every single morning when I walk in. They're there at their desk. You could be playing video games. <laughs> I used to listen to the radio for hours at a time during the middle of the afternoon at my job when there wasn't anything to do. Katie worked at a corporate job. On Monday by noon, she had all her work done for the week. Government contractor and her bosses weren't busy in meetings. And then she listened to audiobooks the rest of the week. And she got increases and promotions and as well. <laughs> so it's, there's a perception of adding value and you can just show up. But it's not to say you should do that. You should actually add value. But be there first. Stay late. Don't be a negative Nelly. Best way to save a lot is to earn a lot. That means work harder. If you think you're going to work 40 hours per week and create wealth, you are wrong from someone who has $1.5 million in net worth. Disagree. This person is wrong. You can build wealth working 40 hours a week. It would just take someone longer to do so. It's not going to happen probably in 10, 15 years. Certainly there's people out there that have done that. So it's going to vary on the particular person's job. I would say someone who's some type of contractor setting their own hour, certainly IT contractors. Those guys get paid 100 bucks an hour sometimes. You can work 40 hours a week. 
had a friend, again, back in corporate life. He was a contractor before we worked together. He made $100 an hour, took six weeks of vacation, set his own schedule, picked up jobs. Then when he wanted to take a break, he would take a break, take three months off or whatever it happened to be, bounce around from job to job. Travel was killer for him. But doing that, living below your means, yeah, you can build up a bunch of money really, really quick. And if you want to work on a manufacturing job and that makes you happy, you want to do that, looking forward to going fishing on the weekend, you can do that too and still build wealth, living below your means. Fifth, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. We, as in this person, have never had, never paid any interest on our credit card, but have traveled well with their Air Miles program. Person with $3.8 million in net worth. Yeah, if you got the discipline to manage credit cards, pay them off every month, stay out of debt with them, you can reap the rewards of them. Clearly, it worked for this person, $3.8 million in net worth. Now, here's comes to shuffling because I didn't staple these together. Six. We'll get through a couple more of these. You need a plan and a budget. <gasps> Not a budget. And you should mm -hmm. stick to it. It's a spending plan. But an important line in your budget is a slush fund that you can use for your Starbucks fix or splurge. Just make sure you track and stay true to your plan. It's from someone with $1.7 million in net worth. So a prior person said, never go to Starbucks. And this person says, oh yeah, Starbucks is okay as long as it fits in your plan, which is true. Slush fund, miscellaneous fund. What was I working on the other day? What was I calling it? A buffer of some sort in your checking account goes up and down between good times and bad. That's money that's set aside. You can use that for fun, unexpected expenses, as extra left over at the end of the month. Go out and have a 18 Starbucks over the course of the weekend. Stay awake, have a good time. Number seven, start saving early and save until it hurts. The power of compound interest is a real thing. That's from a person with $3 million in net worth. That is a truth. Compound interest, the longer, the earlier you start, the less you have to put aside, the longer the money has to compound. Why is Warren Buffett such a, a billion billionaire? Because the dude is like 90 and he had bought his first investment when he was 11. That's why, it wasn't one of the parts to it. He's been saving for a long time. That money's been compounding for a long time. Next, figure out the kind of life that you wanna have, not the stuff, but the life. What is important to you? Then figure out what that will cost and then pursue a career you enjoy that can help you achieve the life that you want. That's from a person with $8.3 million in net worth. Uh, living a life where someone is miserable at their job is not a life at all. So I can get behind this. Figure out the kind of life you want, work to get there. The first job often isn't the last job or the last career someone will have. It's the starting point. You got to figure out what you want to do. And it's okay if you don't know, because I don't think most people do getting started. That's why people switch jobs an average of 13 or 14 times and switch careers an average of two to three times of their life. Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. A couple more of those when we get back from the break. Got a question like I answered on the show? Scott at scottallenturner.com. We'll be right back. Check out this awesome cat t-shirt. If you're watching the live stream. 